Right, new this morning, this time of year, we celebrate Hmong New Year, not just here in Iowa, but all over the country and all over the Midwest. We do it through our food, our music, our clothes. This is a traditional Hmong shirt that I'm wearing right here. This is all rooted in our history. Knowing our past has springboarded Hmong people into the mainstream, especially the last couple of years, as these people you're about to hear from this morning have seen from Olympic gold medalists to award-winning celebrity chefs. So when I was young, it's priceless. My mom would pack on like 20 pounds of coins and stuff on me. The memories her Hmong clothes bring back about her family. I made this. Sandy Yang can remember. So when I got married, guess what? My mom said, I'm, you know, um, check your suitcase because, um, you know, I pack you all the stuff that you made. Her love for Hmong clothes and her culture extending far back to childhood in Oregon. How old were you when you bought that? About eight. So yeah, I worked hard strawberry picking, and I bought it for myself. Now a mother herself, Sandy comes to life this time of year as Hmong people all over the country, including right here in Iowa, celebrate the Hmong New Year. It's a time to step out and just be Hmong and be proud. For Sandy, the last few years, especially the proud part, has been loud. I think it's amazing. Amazing to celebrate that pride here in Iowa and share it. As Sandy puts it, being Hmong is being connected. So in the last few years, seeing glass ceilings broken all over the country, world history made, she hopes her daughters envision that for themselves. There's someone who is just like you out there making it big. You could if you want to. And to find two people who have inspired her. Just head up I-35 North to St. Paul and Minneapolis. There, yeah, I mean, it's it's great. You find John Lee and Yang Ta, parents of gymnast Sunisa Lee, the first Hmong Olympic gold medalist ever. You know, right now, not only that we were, we're seeing other younger kids, not just the boy, but the girls are uh, coming up. And now we have so many girls successfully out there in the field now. They understand that pride Sandy carries as a mother around St. Paul. SUNY's presence is seen. It means a lot for this to be a big deal in Minnesota and in my city. Felt and celebrated a feat Hmong parents like John and Yang, who came up in a different time, are proud to see. I mean, I see little girls that are out there doing gymnastics or out there doing soccer, playing all these kind of sport because wanted to make it big. And, you know, a lot of parents are out there supporting their kids. So that was great. You know, like in our time, we don't have anybody to support us. If you could, if you could look at your kids and uh, the touch, you know, you could kind of bond towards the whole goal. Huh? Like, if you see a kid that could dance, right? Tell me how many kids are there. Oh, I'm going to get started. Just a short drive away in uptown Minneapolis. It's not nothing new, man. Is Union Hmong Kitchen the manifestation of a goal, of support, of achieving? Hundreds of years, my our, our you know ancestors have been doing that in the mountains of Laos and in the hills of Laos. And now we, as that one generation, gets to speak on it. We get to carry that story. Chef Yevang, founder of Union Hmong Kitchen and boasting a list of accolades longer than his menus, has given Hmong cuisine mainstream exposure like never seen before. But it all tells a story about family. You know, you know the Hmong word, Sengzu, you know, and we, we think about that word. That word is, you know, it's so rich to us. You know, it's just not a word that means an ancestors. Knowing the past, has pushed Chef Year forward. Being Hmong means that you strive forward, not just for yourself, you strive forward remembering your, your past to know where you are in, in your present to give trajectory for our people's future. When I was growing up, I didn't get that. So to have my kids, you know, play sport and be good at it and be successful, I will support no matter what. Like John and Yang, Sandy is a mother. Like Chef Yia, Sandy has ambitions and dreams. I hope that like the younger generation will step up, you know, so the community to come together and just get to know one another. And being one as Hmong people, they also want to keep generations connected, moving forward together. In Des Moines, Chinuher, Local 5 News.
And in the next part to this story, a few Hmong Iowans who have made history themselves, who have carved their paths right here in the Hawkeye State are sharing their stories and about moving forward. So here's a look at what's coming up in that next part. For you to see that resurgence of Hmong pride, especially through the last couple of years, what's that been like for you to see? It's awesome. Right now, we're seeing this resurgence because Hmong kids are saying, look, I look like that person. I can be a news anchor. I can be an executive director of an arts organization. I can be a chef. I can be an Olympian. I was uh, taught by my dad that, you know, no matter what you do, don't give up. If you give up, your dream dies right there. I can't wait to share that second part to bring it all home back yeah. here to Iowa. Uh, those two who you just heard from there, I'll introduce you to them in the next story, but they are history makers right here in Iowa and just huge blessings to this community. As Hmong New Year celebrations wrap up around the country, many who took time to reflect on the history that brought us here, they're also reflecting on how we can build on that. So in part two of our story celebrating Hmong New Year, Hmong Iowans who have made history right here in the Hawkeye State show us just how connected the past is to our future. Okay, okay, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, boy. In this house, he enforces the rules. Okay, you want to say hi to the camera? And Dua yeah. Laura knows it too. Ah, uh, yeah, you want to say hi to the camera, huh? Okay, okay. A bit of change in pace for him, a veteran law enforcement officer with Des Moines Police. Here I am, 20 years later. And a trailblazer for police departments in Iowa. Yeah, I was the first Hmong police officer and the first Southeast Asian police officer. My dad was lucky enough to, when he was in his dying bed, he also saw uh, me got promoted through a video. Today, Dolor is a sergeant, making him the only Hmong person ever promoted to that rank in Iowa. And he's worked hard to do good for Des Moines with his position, constantly learning. Well, I, I could do Thai, Thai Dams, Hmong, uh, English, and Lao. These should be five languages. Yeah. And giving back to Des Moines and the youth, important for Dua as a husband, father, and Hmong American. Christine Herr knows that well. So she's an amazing photographer. As someone who leads youth and young artists, as executive director of Art Force Iowa, and having always known Sergeant Lord. To me, he's not just Des Moines PD. To me, he's like an uncle who does that. Christine and Sergeant Lore, they lead youth in Iowa because they understand it's crucial for the future. As Hmong people around the country throw celebrations like this one in St. Paul, Minnesota for Hmong New Year. For you to see that resurgence of Hmong pride, especially through the last couple of years, what's that been like for you to see? It's awesome, right? We're seeing more and more Hmong people in mainstream media, and that's exciting. Like we got SUNY, we have Brenda Song who's been in this for forever, and now she's getting her recognition too as, as a Hmong American. Hmong kids are saying, look, I look like that person. I can be a news anchor. I can be an executive director of an arts organization. I can be a chef. I can be an Olympian. I can be a movie star. Who understands more about the Olympian Christine is talking about than John Lee and Yang Ta, parents of USA Gymnastics star Sunisa Lee, the world's first ever Hmong Olympic gold medalist. Now that not only that we see our, uh, our kids growing up to be success, success, success right? But we also have the parents that's um, supporting their kids. They think it's that support paired with investing in the future is what has helped Hmong people continue to thrive. We got all these other big you know, kids with big names that moving up, motorcycle, boxing, you know, all that. With Nisa, it was like, um, I didn't force her. Pretty much we just kind of like, okay, we'll just support. I mean, all my kids, I mean, like John and I were pretty active. So I always encourage my kids to sign up for sport. And their story has inspired Hmong people all over, much like. Mom taught me how to make purple sticky rice. And she would take my hands and she would put it in the rice and she would tell me that you have to make your fingers like this and you have to stir it up. Chef Ye Vang's story in Minneapolis. Now an award-winning chef and owner of Union Hmong Kitchen, Chef Ye's past goes hand in hand with his future. We get to build on what our parents and their parents built on 
and hopefully that one day our kids get to build on that. That's what being Hmong is about. We've always done that, you know, with or without the media. Progress takes time, as they've learned, and with time, hopes for the Hmong community based off their own life experiences. A lot of people tell me that Nisa would never make it, right? When she made it, then, then people start realizing, oh, maybe she can do it, right? So a lot of kids out there with a lot of talent, please support them. Our young kids, as they're growing up, they become incredible operators, tacticians, dominate in whatever field they want to go in. Because we need that representation in there. Go, be the best. Don't just go and be the best Hmong, da 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 da, whatever. Be the best. These moments are what springs everyone forward. I do want to show you this and, and see what you think about this. Well, you know, you know I saw Christine Christine was just a baby, okay? Well, when I was here. We're going to church together. It, it is, like I say, it is an eye opener. It is about that, you know, this is what I, I say again and again. Your sons and daughter does not have to be a doctor and lawyers. And you know, like Christine, she can lead people through arts and music, can heal people. She can be, you know, uh, that impact with, with the community. I think we could use a lot of people like her, okay, in the community. Oh, that's so sweet. I'm gonna try not to cry. But I, I feel really warm and it makes me feel good. In Des Moines, Chinu Herb, Local 5 News. And one cool fact Sergeant Lore shared with me. So after nearly 30 years as the first and only Hmong officer turned sergeant with DMPD, this year he was able to help recruit the department's second Hmong officer, a young man named Lang Lee from Storm Lake.